Hello everybody and welcome to another Brother Crypt YouTube video. Um, sorry guys, I haven't really been updating you with fresh content recently. Um, but I've been doing a lot of traveling and I've been exposed um, to some new things. And usually, you know, when I'm exposed to, uh, to new things, I like to take my time, I like to do my research. Um, and I like to find out new information. Um, but yes, you know, welcome to all of my new subscribers. Uh, thank you for my existing ones. And in this video, I just really wanted to give you an update as to what I've been to, some of the ICOs um, that I'm going to get into. And I'd also like to leave you um, knowing that I plan, you know, to execute some some more high quality content both um, through my channel and hopefully more online um, web based as well so I have a few things in the pipeline um, but yes let me just get into it so um, as per my last video a few weeks ago um, I was fortunate enough to see Ian Bellina in London um, and then I was even more fortunate enough to get to uh, the private party. This private party was very, very insightful. It really blew my mind, to be honest, because in this room, in this party, there was about 90 people and the majority of them were had invested into crypto for at least a year or two. Some of them are in Ian Bellina's. Uh, private Patreon group. So that was sort of the caliber of some of the people that I met. Um, and it was really insightful because, you know, whilst um, whilst investing in cryptocurrency, a lot of the information that I've been getting has been through like reading. I've been in the game for a long time. But really, when you're condensed in a small room with other ICO professionals um, who other people who are invested who have been investing in ICOs for quite some time um, still sharp and still you really get to learn what other people are doing who were successful and my mind was blown I came away with so many ideas and I've been thinking about those ideas um, so as you can see you know there's Ian in the, in the middle and there's Superman as, as well so fortunately, you know, I was able to party with these lot and learn a lot. And then uh, moving on, I think there's a picture of me with Ian and Superman. So after I had um, been partying with Amsterdam, while I was actually at Ian's party, I did meet another chap from the UK as well. And I also met another chap who was from Amsterdam as well. So I was invited to Amsterdam just to hang out, you know, uh, because after London, after Ian Bellina's London tour, um, I then went on to Amsterdam where obviously Ian was speaking and then basically we were able to do the same thing again. Um, and Amsterdam was really cool. Unfortunately, I don't have that many good pictures, but um, it, was, uh, it was really eye-opening. There were all of these... Um, ICOs that we can see um, and a lot of them were pitching and it was really good to be in the room with Fanta uh, Phantasma and also Sparkster as well. Um, Sparkster won the competition and fortunately I was able to you know um, listen to some of the more intimate conversations that were had uh, between Ian and his team and other people from Sparkster as well. Um, that was eye-opening and I'll tell you a little story actually. Um, Ian's decision to call Sparkster, you know, um, the top of his all-time ICOs was, a, this was very much a, a shock to me because whilst I Sparkster were pitching I was making up my own assessment and then I started doing my own research you know on my mobile phone doing my own groundwork and um, based on my intuition I didn't really like the feel of the team I didn't really feel that they were capable basically the CEO of Sparkster said that they had been working on this project for about 
eight years. He'd been using his own money. Um, however, I, I just got the feel that it wasn't necessarily designed to be a blockchain eight years ago. And after checking out their website, it looks like you know, they are a web development company that have somehow morphed into a blockchain company. So I sort of came away unsatisfied um, and I wasn't necessarily going to invest. So then over dinner, Ian said that he was going to invest and later on he, he deemed it his, you know, all time top ICO. This I was very skeptical about and it did raise my eyebrows. However, I quickly realized that, you know, we are com in complete different positions. Um, for example, I am more of a retail investor um, looking to get mainly involved in main sales or crowd sales, sometimes pre-sales or private if I can, but the majority of the time it is crowd sales or pre-sales. Ian Bellina is slightly different because he has such a big following um, if he likes you and if he gets behind your project, then he has the ability to actually make your ICO successful. It, it could get a, like a 10x or a 20x, but then, you know, further down the line, a few months later, once the project has gone live on an exchange or the coins have been released, is it still going to perform? So my investing, you know, my investing uh, process is to really look for the long term. Is this kind of coin going to be long in the look in in the long term? And you know, based off um, what I came across from the Sparks the team, um, I was unsure. The CEO, the main guy, he's a very good salesman, you know, um, his pitch was very good. But then afterwards, I felt that there was substance missing. However, for, for Ian, for whatever reason, he's decided now to call Spark to his all-time ICO. So, yeah, it was just very insightful to, to see that insight, not necessarily over a screen, but real life in person. Um, and yes, uh, after this event, I spent another two or three days in Amsterdam. I was networking with some people who were in Ian Bellina's Patreon. And um, yeah, and then I came back to London. And then um, about a week or two later, I was in New York. So yeah, I'm sure some of you who have seen New York, you know, you this is just a Rockefeller building. But I thought, hey, since I'm showing you pictures of what I was doing, uh, when I was traveling with, you know, Ian Bellina's Crypto World Tour, I might as well show you some of the pictures that I quickly took in New York as well. So when I was at the Rockefeller building, um, I went on the top tour and I was able to see all of New York, uh, 360 degrees. Um, and it was really insightful. I was able just to meditate on a few things and it was magical. Uh, my main purpose of going to New York was for a lecture, but I thought, hey, while I was out there, let me hang out. And then um, I was actually hanging out in Coney Island as well. And here are pictures of some of the lecture that I attended in New York. Um, okay, now let's move on. So um, I quickly just uh, compiled this so I can just give you information uh, very quickly. Um, so yeah, since coming back and whilst I was also on my travels, um, some of here are some of the ICOs that I've invested in. Um, there may be more actually, but I think these are the main ones off the top of my head. Um, I should have already informed you that I was in lending block. Um, I was in lending block for almost at least a month now, probably a little bit more. Um, but one that I haven't announced, okay, let me not get ahead of myself. Um, for those who don't know, lending block uh, is an exchange for borrowing and lending cryptocurrencies uh, for digital assets. You know, so borrowers and lenders can enter into like a type of cost, uh, cross chain, fully collateralized crypto versus crypto lending asset. So it sort of um, is different from other crypto lending projects because they usually hold your crypto and then they give you cash. But with uh, lending block, you're able to sort of buy one crypto, excuse me, you're able to borrow one cryptocurrency 
um, against another crypto. So for example, if you have Bitcoin, then you can sort of borrow Ethereum and use your Bitcoin for collateral. Um, right now in the moment, you know, the market's really not doing too bad. So um, Lending Block to me seems like a good project and you'll probably notice that it's actually less than the ICO price, okay? Um, the next one that I've also got into is Autonomy. Now, <clears throat> Autonomy is bringing, you know, um, aims to bring a comprehensive security solution uh, to the Internet of Things. Um, what is, you know, what is undeniably clear is that, you know, Internet of Things is set to revolutionize the world as we know it and will play a dispensable role in everyday life. Um, but one popular issue has come to the forefront um, is security. So autonomy um, agrees to sort of work on security um, to prevent sort of attacks to Internet of Things devising, devices. Um, you know, the autonomy ICO provides a security protocol and infrastructure uh, supposedly for billions of IoT devices to maintain trusted interoperability for both data and commerce. Um, the underlying IoT security technology of the protocol is developed by their parent company and I believe that's called Sentry. Um, so they're already an existing uh, company and they've got you know links with ARM, Flextronics and also Intel. Usually, I'm not too passionate about um, Internet of Things, um, but when I reviewed the team, I looked at the partnerships. This one made sense to me, so I went with um, Autonomy as well. And then, you know, the next ICO that I've also got into is also P-Chain. Uh, I managed to get into the crowd sale, didn't really get as much as I would have liked to, but nevertheless, I did get some. Um, and just in case some of you don't know, you know, P-Chain um, is a multi-chain system designed to address um, issues of scalability and again, interoperability. Um, they have a goal of maximizing, you know, their versatility and they are designing a protocol that leverages side-chain architectures, also cross-chain transactions and a smart data oracle. You know, P-Chain is supposedly meant to be the first multi-chain solution to use the Ethereum virtual memory pool compatible. Um, right now, I'm not really too pleased with P-Chain. Um, I'll give them a few more weeks and I, I, then I'll, you know, go into them further, further. But yes, I got into P-Chain. Um, I think at, when I last checked, it had already done a two or a three times my initial return so yeah it's already gone up by like 200 or 300 percent and then finally uh, not finally there's actually two more left but yes i managed to get into definity um i've been in the community for quite some time um definity aren't necessarily doing an ico they are doing airdrops and luckily um i managed to send my KYC, all my bits and pieces, uh, my identity, you know, prove that I'm not American or whatever. Um, and yeah, I'm just waiting to receive the tokens. I believe they are going to be either releasing their main net in the last quarter of the year, probably September. So I'm anticipating the tokens anywhere from September right to the end of the year. Um, just for those that don't know, you know, Definity is a public network of compliant computers providing a centralized world compute cloud where software can be installed and run with all the usual benefits of smart contract systems hosted on a traditional blockchain. So, yeah, there's lots of hype around this um, project. Um, I've been following it and um, yeah, I'm quite excited for what they want to do. I think they're going to be, you know, really helpful to be able to run applications in the cloud. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. 
and then you know the 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 the, the most that I'm bullish on is Quark Chain. Yeah. So, um, Quark Chain. Um, I've really been interested in Quark Chain for so long. Unfortunately, I was unable to get into the ICO for for Quark Chain. I have to admit, I went through all of the hoops. Um, and um, I didn't get in, so I bought their tokens off the exchange, and I was really just as surprised to see that they had already been listed on Binance. Um, so yes, um, you know, looking back now, um, the price of Quark Chain was cheaper than when I bought it. Um, so I've took a little bit of a loss, but usually when I when I'm passionate about particular projects and particular tokens like I was with Quark Chain, um, I have a long-term view, I have a long-term perspective on them. So, you know, I'm really not looking to do any activity for at least a year after um, some of the bonus coins have been released. Um, but yeah, Quark Chain. Um, in essence, what does Quark Chain do? So, you know, Quark Chain is very sort of similar um, to P Chain in the sense that they are working on scalability and interoperability as well. Um, I think Quark Chain they're going for you know speed, and um, I must say that their ICO has been really insightful because you know they managed to galvanize the whole community. Um, and they had a massive following basically so it was really anticipated but in essence you know quark chain is a peer to be also transaction based blockchain which utilizes sharding um and root chain technology to make um you know their network scalable and secure um its main net is due to launch towards the end of this year in q4 so yeah, I'm expecting big things in September. But hey, if 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 it's not September two thousand and eight, uh, two thousand and eighteen, then who knows? It might be September uh, two thousand and nineteen. I really don't care. And uh, they have a total supply that is you know quite big, which I which I recall about ten billion tokens, um, and it has a lot of you know, attention from the community. Um, the only thing about Quark Chain, I'll probably get into that later, is because, you know, I've heard rumours that a lot of the staff have dumped their coins. Um, so we, we shall necessarily see about that, you know, before making those claims conclu conclusively, I would like to do my, my research further. Um, but, but yes, in essence, you know, I've got into about uh, at least four ICOs in the month of June, or since I last uh, created a video for you. Yes, since I last created a video, I've got into at least four, preferably five ICOs. Um, these are all of the ones that I've done. So um, I just wanna quickly sum up the slide very quickly. Um, and I wanted to share some of the, the news highlights that I came across, um, which I felt were important over you know, over the last few weeks. So, um, one of the first news articles I came across was all of the top 100 cryptocurrencies uh, see red amidst CFTC price manipulation probe. So, this article was actually posted about 20 hours ago um, and it's available on Coin Telegraph. But basically, um, crypto markets have had a sharp drop today in the wake of the news that the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, has launched a probe into four major crypto exchanges. All of the top 100 cryptocurrencies by market capitalization are in red over the 24 hours um, to, to, to the time of press, while total market capitalization is about is down by about 20 to 30 billion over the same period um bitcoin um has lost you know shy of somewhere between five to ten percent of its value in the past 24 hours and um, according to this article it's trading at 
$7,244. The majority of the deadline took place over a period of just two hours earlier. Ethereum is revisiting its early July lows, having dipped below 600 mark yesterday after losing around 6% in 24 hours. The coin is traded at around um, $568. Yesterday, I was able to get some Ethereum for about $550, uh, maybe a little bit less. So, um, carrying on with this article, total market capitalization is at $320 billion at time press. Um, the market cap has declined by $120 billion over the past 30 days, constituting a value loss of about 26%. Among the top 10 currencies by market capitalization, IOTA and EOS have suffered the largest losses over the, 20, over the past 24 hours. The sharp decline in cryptocurrencies price takes place in the wake of news that US Commodities Futures Trading Commission has requested trading data from crypto exchanges Bitstamp, Coinbase, Itbit and Kraken. These are respectively the 21st, 14th, 45th and 13th largest cryptos in the world by trade coin volume according to CoinMarketCap. Following the launch of the Bitcoin futures trading by CME Group, the four exchanges subpoenaed by the CFTC have been providing price data for CME Group. Um, the CFTC's request is a part of an investigation into whether there is any activity taking place on these platforms that might constitute crypto price manipulation. Bloomberg reported today that a South Korean exchange, CoinRail, is reviewing its systems after a suspecting hacking attempt. CoinRail had reportedly claimed that it managed to freeze the affected um, altcoins which are NPXS, NPER, and ETX coins. I have never heard of these. Continuing on, however, the event is unlikely to have any significant impact in price action on the markets, with coin market cap data showing that CoinRail is the 99th largest, uh, largest crypto exchange. Um, entrepreneur and Bitcoin evangelist tweeted a poll today asking his followers what is the reason for the crypto market sh share drop. Um, seemingly, the implications that fall is not either the F uh, CFTC's data request or the CoinRail hack was met with the approval of crypto community, the aliens being by far most popular uh, version followed by crypto is dead okay um i don't really know why that twitter quote is re relevant um unfortunately this article doesn't really have much bone on it but basically i think the reason that i brought this up is you know over the last few weeks i've been hearing how there's going to be a probe into market manipulation and that the market is being manipulated. So I just really wanted to bring up this article. It's just something that you are aware of. Um, I think I have mentioned this a few times before in other videos, um, but I really think that this is something that is gonna be short term. You know, we have lots of big players coming into the space, uh, Circle, Goldman Sachs, NASDAQ, opening and exchanges. And um, I think a lot of the professional exchanges are going to want to be able to sort of rule out um, market manipulations in terms of, you know, people artificially uh, suppressing the price. So, you know, my thoughts are, is that I hope the uh, SEC, the Security and Exchanges Commission, you know, they do do a successful probe into market manipulation and then they, they, they do put guides, you know, they do put factors in place to sort of reduce this. Um, I also think, you know, um, the CME might be responsible for the artificially low uh, price as well. You know, if you're having people shorting Bitcoin or if there are tools for you to be able to short Bitcoin, then I don't really think it necessarily helps with the price. 
you know, because at the end of the day, what I'm finding is that this is a market and human intelligent, um, human intelligence sort of market and um, factors are sort of um, acted upon, you know, pe people take action basically on how other people feel. Um, let, let me just be blunt, you know, people, they, they hear um, the psychology of others and this market is driven mainly by sentiment. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, with all of these new incumbents coming in, like the CME, I don't think it's hurting. So I, my opinion is that Bitcoin is probably being artificially um, in, uh, inflated, reduced, um, and it's really not helping with the capacity to be able to forward things like that. Um, sorry for my ramble. Let me move on. Okay. Now, another interesting factor I came across is Inventor of Beats headphones applies to SEC for 30 million, uh, 300 million ICO. Um, so embattled headphones manufacturer Monster Product Inc. has applied to the US regulators to launch a giant 300 million initial coin, offer, uh, coin offering a securities and exchange commission uh, filing signed 25th of May confirms. Monster, which began trading in 1978, but in recent years became famous for signing away the rights to its Beats headphone, now plans to issue five hundred million monster money network tokens selling 60 percent in its ico the sec filing represents a registration of mmny tokens as possible securities under u.s law um, the proceeds will go to the creation of a platform based on um, ethereum blockchain to allow investors to use tokens for purchases which Monster breaks down into three stages. Stage one, establish um, Monster Money Network to provide the basic uh, transactional functions such as Monster Money wallets and processing transactions in their native token. Stage two, establish a private off-chain platform where microtransactions are completed with, with, uh, without or very little transactional cost caused by mining activities, gas. Stage three, complete Monster's blockchain and integrate such blockchain into the operating system of the companies, such as marketing, accounting, auditing, payroll services, inventory, controlling, shipping. Okay, so basically, you know, um, why I brought this up is I, th I feel this is interesting news. You know, we already have quite a few um, old school incumbent companies doing ICOs, you know, earlier on in the year, we heard of Telegram conducting their ICO, um, you know, also Tron, excuse me, Telegram, Telegram are in the process of them also conducting their ICO, and, excuse me, now we're hearing about companies like Monster who wish to raise uh, 300 million for their ICO. Um, it's interesting. Um, what I take away from this article is that initially they're going to be launching on the Ethereum blockchain, but if they, you know, com uh, complete stage three, then they're going to have their own blockchain, uh, Monster's blockchain. Um, my initial opinion when hearing the article and hearing that they wanted to, you know, be based on the Ethereum blockchain was that $300, $300 million, you're raising far too much. I don't necessarily see the value. Um, and then again, you know, Monster have been known for letting beats go. And look what Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine done, done with beats. Um, Beats, in my opinion, is a bigger headphones company now than Monster, although Monster have been in the game for a lot longer, um, Beats is more successful. So um, I think that the, the important gem here and takeaway is that we are going to see more and more companies um, use the blockchain for them to establish their own financial ecosystem. So in the article, they've said that stage one, 
um, is establish a Monster Money Network to provide the basic transactional functions such as Monster Money Wallets and processing transactions in MMNY tokens. This is what I was thinking. I was basically saying, well, any company or any government can now have their right to their, their own token so money is gonna be sort of you know branded now it's not it's not necessarily gonna be something that's issued by a central government and um, I, I believe that we're gonna see a lot more of this into the future um, also the article doesn't state whether it's gonna be public and you know whether they're gonna be doing a traditional ICO um, I think the best thing that you can do in this situation is perhaps buy equity instead of you know you buying their ICO tokens. I think you're you're gonna you're you're gonna be far better off just buying shares or some form of equity in the company um, rather than just getting tokens. Okay, now the next article is Nasdaq CEO: Cryptocurrencies are height of hype. Um, I'm just going to skim through this very quickly. In an interview on Bloomberg um, Business News on June 5th, um, Adrena Friedman, president of CEO of Nasdaq Inc., said cryptocurrencies are the height of a hype circle and can be a financial element of the internet. Um, speaking on how Nasdaq looks at disruptive technologies, including instruments like cryptocurrency, Friedman said that the corporation had been taking a research-orientated approach to when and whether they want to be involved in digital currencies. Uh, Freudman said that she believes that the construct of cryptocurrency is beginning to become one of the companies can understand and has potential to become a financial element of the internet. So I very much agree. I think that is a very good statement. You know, that's how, how we're thinking. And um, yeah, I just brought this up again because, you know, NASDAQ are planning to launch their own exchange. Um, uh, I think in Q3 as well, so it's something to be aware of. So yeah, you know, my opinion is that you know we are in a micro, we we are in a market, and a market has cycles. So there's going to be up and there's going to be downs. Um, I don't think anybody expected that you know um, we would be at a low price right now as we stand. Um, let me check coin market cap. Let me see what the price currently is. Um, so currently, yeah, we're we're wow, we, we've even lost value. We're at a market capitalization of two hundred and ninety three billion dollars. So it has actually gone down from the earlier article that I read. Um, this 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 article here. So yeah, unfortunately, you know, we're in a cycle. So money's going to come out and it's going to come in. Um, it's just part of the game. All right, now let me cover the next article. Um, yes, so Coinbase plans on going into Japanese market. Um, so, you know, Coinbase, one of the largest wallets and cryptocurrency exchanges in the US, revealed its plan to enter the Japanese crypto market. While Japan is renowned for its rather progressive views around crypto, it was one of the first countries to officially recognize uh, Bitcoin after all. Um, entering arguably the world's hottest crypto market is no easy task. At the very least, Coinbase will have to please the fi Japanese Financial Services Authority, the country's major watchdog that has been notably nervous ever since January's infam infamous coin check hack. Um, so yeah, let me just keep it there because, you know, some of you may have heard this news, but it just shows you that, you know, Coinbase is looking to expand its operation. I've heard that Coinbase is actually applying for um, like a trading license as well so that they can trade other other sort of financial instruments, not just cryptos, but maybe stocks or shares. So I've heard things like this, and um, this is necessarily what's going to be required um, for Coinbase, which has mainly started in cryptocurrency, but for it to sort of broaden its markets, 
um, get into new territories and offer new products. And, you know, let's face it, Binance has given Coinbase a run for its money. Coinbase should have done this last year, but it didn't. Um, and Binance is probably just running circles around them so that they feel that they need to go into new markets, which is cool. All right, let me move on to the next one. Uh, yes. Okay, so is Zeus to release 20 graphics card uh, mining master motherboard in fall 2018? US hardware manufacturer ASUS formally announced the release of its second generation cryptocurrency mining motherboard um, on May 30th. The new product, dubbed the H370, uh, mining master motherboard sees the company attempt to corner the increasingly crowded market by targeting high demand users. It follows the release of the B250 mining expert in August 2017. Azus, meanwhile, uh, said plans to launch its new offering in North America begin in Q3 2018. So this is quite good because um, I didn't actually know that Azus are making mining, mining cards, but it's just showing you that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the well-known sort of hardware and software companies, especially the hardware companies, they are taking crypto seriously and they are creating, you know, hardware tools um, to facilitate um, this industry. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, really good news. Furthermore, you know, for for the last few weeks, um, since the last video I've, I've created, in my opinion, you know, I've been hearing mainly positive news that should have um, increased the price. However, it's just weird that with all of the positive news that we're hearing, um, that it's not necessarily being reflected in the price. So that probably goes back to the point I was saying, whereas, you know, the market is being manipulated and, you know, whales don't necessarily care. They're just doing what they need to do so that they can make their money. Okay. Um, now, whilst top crypto exchange Binance sets up a bank account in Malta. Okay. Now, the CEO and founder of Binance revealed that the company has set up a bank account in Malta in an exclusive interview with Cointelegraph on Wednesday, the 6th of June. Binance is currently the world's largest crypto exchange with 1.47 billion in trade volume, according to CoinMarketCap data. The move brings the exchange one step closer to its plans to offer fiat to crypto deposits and withdrawals on its platform, a feature that would further improve the exchange's liquidity and facilitate new investors entering the space with fiat purchases. I think this, this is big news and I think this is really what is needed. Um, you know, in my opinion, when the Bitcoin price goes up, all of the altcoins seem to go up. When the Bitcoin price goes down, all of the altcoin prices seem to go down. It, it just seems like usually it's a rare full of altcoins which aren't necessarily always affected by Bitcoin's dominance. So I think that having, you know, fiat pairs is a great idea that's needed. Um, and it will enable people to say, right, I want to buy um, some quark chain. I don't want but I don't want to buy Bitcoin. I just want to buy Quark Chain, and then I think if uh, they have that pairing, that would be you know that that would be great. So I'm really excited about this, and I'll I'll be sending um, you know Binance um, some cash for me to buy some of the altcoins I need to. Um, just make sure that you know I just want them to make sure that they don't charge too much too many fees for for being able to send cash. You know, okay. Now let's move on. Um, Estonia rolls back its plan to issue national digital currency. 
again on um, Cointelegraph again, Estonia rolled back its plan to establish national cryptocurrency S-Coin following criticisms from the president of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi. The local banking authorities Bloomberg reported on the 1st of June. The managing director of Estonian e-residency program proposed the development and issuance of S-Coin in August last year, along with becoming Estonia's national um, virtual currency. S-Coin could uh, evolve into the official currency of the COIN's e-resident program. In the program, S-Coin would serve as the incentive for foreigners who use um, Estonia's electronic identification to remotely sign documents um, and find other companies. Draghi said in September, no member state can introduce its own currency. The currency of the Eurozone is the Euro. S-Coin will now only be given as an imperatist to e-residents, according to um, an official in charge of the country's IT strategy. So, this is a very interesting story because, you know, I think I've been hearing central bankers, European central bankers, saying that Bitcoin is not a threat, that whilst Bitcoin is revolutionary, it's not a threat because maybe it's because there is a small market. If Bitcoin is not a threat, then why don't you let Estonia do what they wish to do? And I think that this is a classic example of Mario Draghi the president of the central bank trying to protect the euro. I think what will happen, though, in my opinion, is that we will see one currency become digital. Um, I'm not even sure if the petro yuan, which is Venezuela currency, I don't think that's fully digital. But what we are going to see one day is one one cryptocurrency will get digital and then I think that would be great because then it will introduce more people to cryptocurrencies. And then when they get into cryptocurrencies, they will see fundamental value in Bitcoin. And I think that will take the price up. So I don't think it's um, never going to happen. I just think it will you know, take longer than planned. And maybe we'll have a country that's not within the EU or within the Americas. Um, who will release their cryptocurrency and then you know because crypto is a, is a wild business we might see people just investing in that currency buying up assets you know and then yeah that that currency will eventually get consumed by bitcoin that's just my opinion all right and then um the final piece i wanted to cover is finance industry calls Google's crypto ad ban unfair, troubling. Business and investors alike went on record this week to pan Google for its cryptocurrency advertisement ban, which began 1st of June. The Independent reports Monday, 4th of June. The controversial policy, which the internet tried it, excuse me, originally announced in March, failed to significantly impact either Bitcoin or altcoin market today. The BTC USD sustaining new support around 7,500. Prices had increased uh, markedly over the weekend, jumping almost 400 to reach highs over 7,750. As a correction gets underway, Google has come under fire in increasingly explicit terms for its decision to block cryptocurrency while content while it pursues blockchain technology. Excuse me there. Um, I understand that Facebook and Google are under a lot of pressure to regulate what their users are reading, but they are still advertising, gambling sites and other unethical practices. Phil Nunn, CEO of UK investment firm Blackmore Group with uh, 70 million under management said to the independent today. And um, I think that's true. You know, I see the, really the hypocrisy 
and what Google and Facebook are doing. Um, I think maybe there's an element of them which is trying to avoid their users from scams. I do hear things like people are using pictures or of particular actors and then, you know, creating Facebook ads and basically having these shady ICOs and then these ICOs lose money. You know, I, I, I have heard that. But then at the same time, they that is not just an issue that is um, stuck to only cryptocurrency. So you have so many fraudulent companies or individuals who use um, the liking, the shape, the body of a famous person just for their social media posts so they can get clout, even just for advertising. A lot of people do this, you know, they, um, they advertise in using false actors and that's in other different industries. If you look at beauty, even if you look at help, other companies do this. And then at the same time, you know, they've, they've sort of handled this in a very heavy handed way. And I'm thinking that Facebook and Google, they should know better because in essence, they are technology companies as well. So they should have the brilliant minds that are able to research cryptocurrency and know, you know, what's the difference between a genuine ICO and necessarily one that's no genuine, that's not genuine and protect you know, their users that way. Um, but then at the same time, the hypocrisy comes in because, you know, Facebook have announced that they want to create their own cryptocurrency. And, um, you know, I've heard mumblings that Google want to create their mumblings. Also, I've heard mumblings that whilst Google want to create their own blockchain, they've actually asked um, Vitalik the creator of Ethereum, if he would like to work for them. So, you know, what hypocrisy is this? Okay, so really that's, um, I've just got one more and I quickly wanted to go over this article. You know, new report suggests average ICO investor sees 82% profit. Recent um, analysis of coin, initial coin offering has found that the average ICO investor sees returns of 82%, according to a report published um, by the Boston College Carroll School of Management, May 20. The, 50, the 54 page report titled Digital Tulips Returns to Investors in Initial Coin Offering for found evidence. to suggest um, significant ICO underpricings after analyzing a data set of over 4,000 planned and realized ICOs. The ICO st uh, studied raised a combined total of 12 billion, almost all of them since January um, 2017. Average returns from the initial token sale to the first day listed market price on a crypto exchange were found to be a staggering 179% with investor holding periods averaging just 16 days. In cases where the uh, issuers fail to list their tokens on an exchange within 60 days, the researchers imputed large minus 100% negative returns to these coins yet still found the rep representative investor nearly doubled their investment in such cases. Okay, so that's very good news, guys, because, you know, I think my focus right now is definitely in ICOs. I think that's, you know, the best place to be in, especially if you have the time and the luxury of picking them right. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you know, I have a few things that I want to do to improve my own processes but to be able to help other people i don't necessarily want to give too much away but when the time is right then i will go into it in more detail um and i think really that's that's it for this update guys uh, if you want to contact me you can just get me on telegram at brother crypt uh, if you want to reach me by email 
then just send me an email at brothercrypt at photonmail.com. Uh, please bear in mind that I don't always look at this mailbox on a daily basis, so I look at it as and when I feel I choose to. Best way is Telegram. Okay, um, so that's it from now. Let me not take up too much of your time. And, you know, one thing that we should be happy about, or relatively happy about, is that it is Eon. You know, Eon now has launched... So I believe that they're on their mainnet. So congratulations to EOS. Uh, just looking at it on Coin Market Cap, I think um, the price is about twelve dollars per token, and it's and it's held up for me, you know, because I got in a few months ago um, at around five dollars. So it, it's still holding its price for me. All right. So that's it for another uh, Brother Crypt video. Uh, if you found this helpful, please just like and subscribe. Um, sorry that this video was very long, but I did have a lot in me that I wanted to get out. And then now I've got everything out. I'll be working on making more shorter, concise videos. Okay. Um, yeah. Take care. Peace.